All right, so welcome back. Hopefully you really like those examples. I love those examples. Hopefully you work those and, and you really kind of saw how these things interact. In fact, I like the interaction so much, uh, we're gonna talk specifically about interactions. So there's some things, like I like, kind of like my model here, where if, if there's a display none, uh, I don't care about what position says, right? Or if they're out of the flow, I don't care what display was, unless of course it was display none. Um, and there's all these interactions and it's really neat to kind of see how these properties uh, work together so that you can actually get what you want. So there are a lot of properties that interact. So we're not worried about float yet, uh, but we know about all these others. We know about the box model rules. Uh, really, I could have put this in the box model rules. We know about these position offsets and we know about uh, display and position. So display and position, there's four options here. There's four options here. That means there's 16 possible combinations. It's not quite that complex, uh, but I kind of want to look at that uh, and talk about it. So instead of looking at 16 combinations, there's no reason to consider display none, right? Because we know what's going to happen. It's going to be gone. Um, and it turns out as far as the um, fixed and absolute go, they're very different in who they anchor to as their parent, uh, but they're actually very similar for their interactions with the display property. So instead of doing 16, uh, we've managed to cut it down to a three by three. And the goal is just to kind of look at each of these, uh, see what it does. And specifically what I'm curious about is, is who gets ignored. And hopefully you've put a lot of this together already, but I wanted kind of to make an experiment where we make the same page um, nine times. And the only thing we change is whether the position is static, relative, or absolute. Um, and then whether the display is block, inline, or inline block and see what happens. So the first one we're gonna look at is kind of the default. What happens if you're a div and you're running your default? You get static as your default, you get block as your default, and then what does that page look like? And what gets ignored? So the example that we've picked is we've picked a giant yellow box, and onto this giant yellow box, uh, we've put on margin and padding, uh, we've put on um, positions of right and top, so it should get moved over, and then we've actually got the uh, display position that we're choosing for this combo. So this one is block static, and you can notice that it did not get moved. Uh, so that means that this right and this top, uh, they completely got ignored. I'm gonna call these, just so I've got a single word for it, I'm gonna call them position rules, right? So it did respect the size, uh, but it did not respect the position. So that's easy enough to add into our table. So what I'm gonna choose to do is I'm gonna choose to only write down what gets ignored, and then obviously size got respected, uh, so I just left it off. So there's that guy. Next, let's look if what if we change the position to be relative. And if you do that, you respect the size and you respect the, uh, the position properties of right and top, because you can see that it got moved over and it got moved down. I'm gonna go through these quickly, because if I don't, it's gonna take forever. Uh, but if you want to, you've got the slides. You can go through it at whatever pace you want uh, to make sure you can kind of absorb some of these uh, impacts. So that one respected both. Uh, so I actually just left the blocks blank because there was nothing ignored. Uh, next, next, let's talk about this one. So if you're static uh, and we switch you to inline, that's gonna make some big changes, right? What, uh, what gets ignored in that regard? So static in, inline is like king ignore, right? So it ignores the size because the height of, of 100 is obviously not respected. Um, it also ignores the position because this right and this top did not get respected at all. It does still respect uh, the padding on the box model. So that's good, it didn't just completely blow everything away. Uh, but we've got an ignore and an ignore. So we feel those two ignores into our table. Uh, next, what happens, what if we change it to, to relative in line? So it's gonna take up space, um, but if it's got the relative property on, uh, what should happen is it should be able to move out of that space. Um, and this is kind of awkward in this example, because uh, you can see it's got reserved space. Uh, its neighbors respect it. Uh, they know that it's right there. Um, the only problem is it's not in its space, um, which is fine, right? So it's uh, using right uh, and top um, and relative, so it's doing a relative move. Um, so it uh, ignored the size because it's in line, but it respected the position because it is a relative. So we can put that one into our table. Uh, next, let's look at the, uh, the inline block. Uh, so what is it gonna do? We'll start moving a little faster. And you can see that if it's static, uh, it respects the size because it's inline block, uh, but because it's static, it ignores position. So we'll fill that one into our table. And I mean, it's not hard to see, right? So anybody that's static has ignore position, uh, and then anybody that's inline uh, has an ignore size. 
So I'm expecting this guy will probably be empty if I'm doing pattern matching. And sure enough, if I run the demo with inline block uh, that respects size uh, and with relative, it res respects position. So we finished up those top six columns and we've got you know a nice easy pattern uh, to understand. Let's also look at what happens if we set the position to be fixed or absolute. So the important thing to note here is that it completely ignored uh, the display property uh, is how this worked, right? So respect size uh, because it gets forced to block, right? So no matter what you set the, the display to, it essentially interprets it as block. Now note that if you if you were to set it to something other than block, it would still be set to that. It's just when Chrome goes to render it, it just never looks, right? It just uses block. Uh, so it, it's kind of confusing that you can set it to something different. It's just not used. It's just completely ignored. And this actually uh, is, is you know out of the flow, uh, but it does respect these things. And if it ignores display, we really don't have to look at all the combinations for display. We simply know uh, that the others are going to behave the same. Um, so no matter what is set for the display, um, it pushes it over to block, and it actually does respect the size and the position. So I, I wrote down, it, it doesn't ignore any of those things, it just ignores display, which is kind of funny. If you didn't believe me, uh, here are the examples uh, for inline and absolute. And then here's the example for inline block and absolute. There you go, now you believe me. So uh, that's the summary of our table, um, that we can figure out how these things work and how they interact. It seems simple when you do it this way. If you wanted to write that table in terms of uh, rules, uh, if you're trying to decide on rules, your first rule is, if it's display none, nobody else matters. If it's not display none, so you know it's one of the other display rules, next thing you look at is the position property. If it's fixed or absolute, uh, then it has these behaviors, right? And then uh, rule number three, intentionally left blank for now. And then if it's, if it's not one of those crazy guys, like out of the flow or gone, uh, then it's some happy combination uh, that uses that table. So here's one way you could state the conclusions. To be honest though, I kind of like saying them this way instead, right? So uh, display, and then you look to see if it's out of the flow, uh, which will force it to block, uh, spot intentionally left blank, uh, and then happy combination. And so I think this diagram really shows the summary of what all we're trying to do. All right, that's it for this time. Uh, see you next time. Bye.